helping the predictive brain update bad memories. Turns out the story we've been telling ourselves about the neurobiology of trauma doesn't make sense anymore based on what we've learned the past 25 years about brain evolution, function, structure, memory reconsolidation, neuroplasticity, and the predictive brain. How we understand perception of our external world and internal worlds has changed profoundly. There's a growing consensus around the core idea that our nervous system is predicting and constructing our reality for us. And while this has some really disturbing implications related to things like our felt sense of free will and our illusion of objective observation, it has potentially remarkable implications for how humans might heal. Predictive processing might be able to do what no other theory of mind has, explain how we construct reality and possibly even our own selves. Central to this understanding is the role that prediction error plays at all levels of abstraction. And for the purpose of what I'm talking about now, the vast majority of predictions and prediction errors occur outside of direct consciousness and awareness. Prediction errors are central to perception, memory formation, learning, movement of all types, and every experience imaginable. We can think of consciousness, awareness, experience, and our own identities as floating on top of our predictive system the way a foam mat floats in a pool. Remember that the brain is in a black box. <clears throat> its job is to predict what's about to happen. And to do this, it uses everything it's ever learned, has experienced, is currently experiencing, including what it can construct from our right now senses. When a part of a bad memory comes into awareness, the nervous system predicts what is about to happen next. Those predictions based in part on everything that has ever happened shape what you right here, right now are experiencing, including your emotions. <clears throat> in EMDR therapy, at the core of the adaptive information processing model, the stuck information in the trauma connects to right now information that already knows better. Do you know what that is? It's a prediction error you're literally having the experience of a repeated prediction error. You can put that in Bruce Ecker terms or in predictive processing terms, add all those up, and that's what might update permanently the experience of that memory. In flash approaches, we bring a tiny piece of the memory into working memory, and we have a pleasant experience over and over and over. <clears throat> that's a prediction error that we can leverage over and over to allow each micro slice of the memory to be experienced differently. Add them all up and we get a fully and adaptively processed memory that when accessed in a future state will generate a different set of predictions with different body budget allocations. What if the disruptions of attention in EMDR 2.0 aren't taxing working memory at all? What if they induce a prediction error between the client's right now experience and the expectation? Every demo that I've seen of EMDR 2.0, the client is literally having an experience that is different than the expectation in the bad memory. What if the disruptions create a prediction error? And that is what is facilitating the update of the information. What if psychedelics generate prediction errors between the right now experience and expectation? What if parts work works because it allows parts of you to have relational experiences with other parts of you that are different than the expectation? What if parts work creates prediction errors? What if your stance in session, your compassion, your attunement create prediction errors? What if predictive processing is right? 
What if everything Bruce Ecker says is simply a level of practical abstraction down from everything predictive processing implies? There's little doubt that we heal across experiential mismatch. What we've learned from predictive processing is already helping people restore senses lost to disease. It's showing us clearer than ever what perception is. It explains functional disorders. It removes the organic psychogenic boundary for pain and strongly implies some places to go check out if we need to make better peace with the past. Let's go check out.